After much anticipation, we are finally ready to begin mapping. In this video, we will select a base map, draw linear features, and learn how to flip line symbology. First, let's select a suitable base map. We have created many data derivatives from our initial DEM. We have multiple hill shades, slope, and aspect maps. We also imported Google Earth satellite imagery as another data set. All these datasets are useful in different ways, however, all mapping should be drawn on a single base map. The reason for drawing all lines on a single base map is to make our maps consistent, cross-comparable, and repeatable. Hillshades are typically used. Out of the ones that we created, I favor the 31545 hillshade as the shadows are less intense. I will select this as my base map. That means I will only draw geologic contacts and linear features with this base map layer turned on. I will still toggle other datasets on and off while mapping, but all my points, lines, and polygons will be drawn on this particular hillshade. Let's move now to drawing some linear features. I recommend starting with linear features before doing geologic contacts because linear features like faults often crosscut and transcend multiple geologic units. Having them drawn in first will make it easier to draw geologic contacts because we can utilize the snapping function in ARC. Recall the profiles we drew earlier of the SP Mountain Cone, Lava Flow, and the Graben structure. We can always access these by toggling the Profiles group layer in the Contents pane. We can use these 2D profiles to help inform where we draw the faults on the Graben structure, as well as the volcanic crater rims. So let's start easy with the volcanic crater rims. Navigate to the Edit tab up top on the ribbon, then click on the Create Features icon to open the Create Features pane. Click on the line icon under Crater Rim, then be sure to zoom into our digitization scale of 1 to 12,500. There are different ways to draw lines in Arc Pro. The default line icon allows you to point and click to add vertices, kind of like what we did when drawing the map border. Another drawing function is called Streaming. Streaming allows you to draw freeform with your mouse. You click once to begin streaming, then trace out the feature or contact and click again to end the stream. If you have the streaming option selected, you can adjust the stream tolerance or vertex spacing by pressing the O key on your keyboard. Here I have specified a 5 meter vertex spacing. Using the stream function, I will now trace the crater rim on my hillshade base map. If ever you're not happy with your line work and you want to retry, you can select the feature and then delete it. Certain geologic line features have ornamentation, such as hatchers or teeth, that indicate the nature of the feature. For volcanic craters, the hatcher marks are supposed to point inwards to the depression. Depending on which way you draw the line and arc, from right to left or left to right, the ornamentation may be flipped or reversed. We can fix this by first clicking the Save Edits button up top. Then search for the Flip Line Editing tool at the top. Navigate to the Geoprocessing pane. Be sure to select Linear Features as your input layer. Note how the tool recognizes that we already have the feature of interest selected. Go ahead and click Run. Now our crater rimline ornamentation is oriented properly. Now that we've drawn in all of the volcanic crater rims, let's draw in the normal faults that comprise the Graben structure in the Kaibab limestone. I'm going to start with the more prominent western scarp since it is more easily discernible from our data sets. 
Under the Create Features pane, select the Normal Certain line. We know that this fault continues further to the north, but our mapping extent is limited. Therefore, we can begin by drawing our normal fault by snapping the first vertex to the map border. Now I will pan down further south by clicking in on my scroller wheel and then dragging the mouse down. Normal fault symbology also has a unique ornamentation. They have a ball and bar which is to be placed on the downthrown fault block or hanging wall. We again use the flip line editing tool to correct our line symbology. Now that the western normal fault has been traced confidently, let's draw the eastern normal fault of our Graben. This fault is not as easily discerned on the satellite imagery or on the hillshade, but we know it exists from our 2D profiles and it is roughly parallel to the western fault. Also, we can see that the SP Mountain Lava Flow has two lobes that spilled into this structural depression. For this fault, let's use the normal approximate symbology since we are certain the fault exists but where we draw it on the map is an approximate location. Again, let's begin by snapping our fault line to the northern map border and work our way down south. Since these lava flow lobes conceal the fault, we know that the lava flow is younger than the Graben structure. I will show you how to correct this fault line symbology in a future video. Now we have successfully drawn in our crater rim and fault linear features. In the next video, we will draw the rest of our geologic contacts.